Um, we have been, uh, I'm on part four of Lavish Love. There'll be another part next week. Um, but in, in summary, what we have been doing is the lost sheep. We talked about the lost sheep. Uh, the shepherd goes out, he's got one sheep out of a hundred, but he goes out and finds that sheep. And then the woman with the lost coin, and she's, you know, going crazy because she's got to find that coin. You know what it's like. But the themes of it were this, that, that the Savior, Jesus Christ, is passionate for every single one. That he is passionate and he will pursue just one person. That you're not one of a hundred, you're one. You're not one of ten, you're one. But the other thing that comes into those stories, which is interesting, which is why today's narrative will really help us, is that Jesus then says in his story, but repentance, there is more joy in heaven over one who repents than ninety and nine, or more joy in heaven over one that repents. Well, sheep don't repent. But Jesus is using these stories to bring out a message. Uh, coins don't repent, okay? But Jesus is bringing constant repentance makes a big difference, all right? So, that's the summary. Now, to introduce the message today, and listen carefully, how many know what assets are? Yep, what are assets? Assets are things that are of value that you own, right? Assets. Mm -hmm. And then there's liabilities. What are liabilities? Liabilities are what is in debts against those assets or something that takes away from your assets. Now, something could be somewhat of an asset and a liability. And I'm calling this message assets, but we're going to just wind our way in as to why. Um, if you have a $50,000 truck, that's cheap nowadays, I guess. Wow. If you have a $50,000 truck and uh, you owe $40,000 on it, it's an asset. But there's also $40,000 against it. And so that brings its value down, but it's an asset. But you know, sometimes people buy a brand new car and they owe more the first year than what it's worth because the value goes down. So you can own something and it can be a liability. Well, this is important because the kingdom of God is so upside down from the world. Let me explain this. In world economy, an asset, what are assets and liabilities can be the opposite of the spiritual kingdom. And let me give you some examples. Over in Mark 10, there is a man that comes to Jesus. And boy, what a description. What, what a resume. He is called a rich, young ruler. Wow. I've never been called any of those, okay? Maybe young, but at any rate. Rich young ruler. He's got, he's got wealth, he's got youth, and he's got power. Those are assets, right, in the world? Those are assets. But he came to Jesus and he said, Good master, what must I do to have eternal life? What should I do to have eternal life? And Jesus looked at him, loved him, looked at him and said, Here's what you do. Go sell everything you own. And give it to the poor. And then, come after me. Boy, was that an offer. Jesus didn't own a home. Jesus depended on the Father. Now, do you understand something there? The assets of the rich young ruler kept him from becoming a disciple. So really, those assets were a liability to the call of God. Another one, there was this Pharisee named Simon. He held a big dinner for Jesus. 
invited important guests, but this woman crashed the party, a sinful woman. You know what they meant by sinful woman? You know, a loose woman and not the one you want to be seen with in public, right? She crashed the party and she was there at Jesus' feet and she was sobbing and the tears flowed so much that they were washing the feet of Jesus and she was wiping his feet with her hair. And Simon was thinking, hmm, if Jesus knew what kind of a person she was, he would not allow this. Jesus, it didn't say that he read his mind. You know, I don't have to read mine sometimes to just look at people and see that they're... <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think you were raising your hand for yourself, were you? <laughs> uh, you can sometimes just look at a face and know somebody's just not in a very good place. Um, and Jesus looked at him and what he said is, Simon, I have something to say to you. Woo! He's not going to say anything to the woman. Simon, I have something to say to you. I came in and you did not wash my feet. You didn't give me a towel. <coughs> this woman is washing my feet, gives me a, a wash, and, and wipes them with her hair. And then he said, Simon, you want to know something? Your righteousness. He didn't say it this way. Your righteousness, Simon, is a liability. I want you to know that self-righteousness is a liability to the kingdom. When you think you're better than somebody else. And he says, this woman, she is showing much love. And you know why? Because she's had much forgiveness. Who needs forgiveness here today? Yeah. Both hands is right. We need forgiveness. And if you know you've been forgiven, there's much love. Now, I know that's a lot. It's like maybe not our message in Luke 15. But here, let me give you what Jesus said that sums it up. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Small s, it meant themselves, not holy. Blessed are those who are poor or bankrupt in their arrogance. Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Here's why I'm telling you this this morning, because people sit around and say, I don't have what it takes to do this for God, or I'm not a gifted communicator, or I don't know how to show it, or I can't sing, or I can't whatever. And they, they're looking at assets of the world. Jesus did not take the best and the brightest. He didn't take the smartest and the richest. He took those who were willing he took ignorant and unlearned men, the Bible calls them. And he built a church and around the world on ignorant and unlearned men. So you have no excuse. <laughs> because I know you're not ignorant or unlearned, right? So, blessed are the poor in spirit. Go get rid of your riches. He's not saying everybody should give away everything. God knows what your assets are this morning that really are liabilities. What is standing in your way this morning from fellowship with the Father and being in tune with the Father? This message this morning is not about the unsaved. The lost son was a son in relationship and he wandered so this is to everybody here today. You ever have your mind wander? Do you ever get distracted in the middle of spiritual things? Man, what if this morning we were not just in relationship with God, we were in fellowship, really fellowship with God. So let's, let's, let's talk about that, the relationship. So in, in, it's, he says, a man had, in verse 11, two sons. That's relationship. We got from 100 sheep to 10 coins to two sons. Just two. He had two sons. Son is a legal definition here. Okay? Now, 
Why am I going to talk about fellowship and not just relationship? If you've given your life to Christ and you confessed your sins and you asked him to come into your heart, you have a relationship with him, right? With God. You are now a child of God. If you have done that, if you admit you're a sinner and you confess your sin, you know, you don't come, you don't come and clean up your act first. You come just as I am without one plea. So you come as a sinner to Jesus because he welcomes sinners. So you're a child of God. Let's just say that today. Let's just assume that everybody here has asked Christ to come into their life, has really been sincere, confessed their sins, and is related. But let me tell you something. A lot of Christians will not like this message. A lot of churches would not like this message. A lot of denominations would not like this message. Relationship, I said, is legal. That's wonderful. Except it is not the same as fellowship. I'm going to say something really hard right here. In the times that I have done some counseling, tell, I'll, let me tell you some of the saddest times. Some of the saddest times are when I said, oh, so that's, so that's your dad. I'm asking them about their family. Whether it's marital counseling or just for a variety of reasons, personal, individual counseling. And I say, oh, so that's your dad. And do you know what I've heard often? That's not my dad. You're going to know what I mean, some of you. He's just a donor. He's not a dad. <laughs> you know, don't you? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really being really nice. The kids are gone. But I want to tell you something. Those are sad words because they're true. There are people, look, you could have a birth certificate and it gives the name of your dad or mom. And, and you would be in legal standing if something happened to them and you could maybe sign, but there is no fellowship. There is relationship, but no fellowship. God wants a lot more than a relationship with you. He wants fellowship. Let me tell you what fellowship is. Well, you've got, you've got scriptures up there, but fellowship. Moses. God said to Moses, My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said, If you don't go... He didn't say, I'll be God, and you can call on me. I'll be in heaven, and you'll be down there in the desert. And you can call on me. God is not watching us from a distance this morning. God wants to be in fellowship with you. And he says, Moses said, God, if you don't go with us, don't even send us. Do you know how easy it is to go out the door and start your day and not have the presence of God like you really want it or need it. I could go out the door, yep, he's, he's my God, and, and I'm saved, and I'm going to heaven, and that has nothing to do with a fellowship where his presence is known. Yes, I know it's an old song, and I repeat it often. He walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, no other will ever know. Fellowship. And the other scripture, 1 Corinthians, God is faithful. This is biblical. You were called by him into fellowship. Do you know the word relationship is not used near as much? You were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ the Lord. This morning you are called not to have some arrangement with God. You are called into fellowship with God. Oh, and, oh and there's more. May, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. You have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and with the Son of God. Isn't that something? Let's look. I actually want to read something here. 1 John. 
Uh, let's see. We'll just read 1 John 1, 3 to 7. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. There is no darkness in him. If we say we have fellowship with him and yet we walk in darkness and yet we are not a lion and not practicing the truth. Now listen to this. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sin. Did you know it is fellowship with Jesus that cleanses you from sin? I know you maybe have forgiven, you've had your sins forgiven, but do you know if you walk in the light, he's in the light, you have fellowship. We have fellowship with one another, but we also have fellowship with Jesus. And because of that, the, his blood cleanses our sins while we're walking. Do you know if I'm walking with him, his blood covers me. If I'm in fellowship with him, his blood covers me. And he forgives me. Now, he goes on to say, um, yes, I'll just leave it there. We have fellowship with one another. So the word fellowship, fellowship comes up three or four times in there. Now that's a long way, a long kind of introduction, if you will, to our message. But it's important to it, which is why we'll continue this series. You see, he, the son is in relationship with the dad, but his son's request is separation. He says, give me. So verse, man had two sons, verse 12. The younger of them said to his father, give me the share of the estate I have coming to me. He, in other words, what he's going to do, when we read it in the story, you'll find out why. He wants to get distance from the father. Now there's personal responsibility certainly of sons growing up and leaving home and all of that good stuff. But that's not this. This son, everything the father has is available to him. That's said in the story. You, everything everything is, is yours, son. When you're in my home, everything is yours. But the son says, I want mine. Give me. Give me my share. He wants to separate. It's kind of like the garden scene. You've got everything here in the garden and all the trees, but the enemy comes along and says, you know what, you have a right to, to take care of yourself. And they broke fellowship in the garden because of, oh, I can have this on my own. <coughs> so the son requested separation is what he was requesting. Now, it's hard for me to identify. By the way, this father, he, he just, he does it. But it, what's interesting here is, if I, I can't relate to parts of this because if I would have said, uh, Dad, give me my share of the inheritance, I'd have got a third of the bills. <laughs> That's what would have happened. I mean, he's not dead yet. The father's not dead, and the son is saying, I want my inheritance now. And, and there's two sons, and he, so he, he says he divided it for them. Now, now, I want to tell you, this may not come off. You may, some of you may not relate to this, or you have situations that are different than mine. But ever since, even while we were engaged, Joy and I, there was this sense that we were one. I mean, you, you want to know how I can tell how much fellowship there is versus relationship? Checkbook. <laughs> the checkbook. Um, we've had two checking accounts often. We do now. But we're joint owners of both of them. We've had them because of one in Florida and one here and whatever. And we've had them. And there was one point in which we kind of sat down and said, okay, we'll have these two checking accounts and this is what you make in your career. You pay these bills and I'll pay these bills and just divided it up so that, you know. And one day we looked at each other and said, this is stupid. It's your money. Your money is my money and my money is your money. And you know what I mean? 
Now, I know some people use, some fellas especially, you'll use the checkbook to control women or something, you know? I understand that. They'll use a checkbook and i got to ask, honey, could I have a few dollars? That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am saying that my checkbook isn't mine. It's available. I am, let me give you the Greek of the word fellowship. It is koinonia. It has several meanings. It is not just legal. There's a difference in a legal relationship and a love relationship. Mm -hmm. There are people that are married that don't share much of anything. That's legal. But that's not love. I want you to know this morning, though, that God wants a legal and a love. He's got your name written down in heaven. You have a birth certificate. But it's a love relationship. That's the difference. And so, there's a oneness in that. Koinonia is different. Fellowship, partnership. Partnership. Did you know that God chose to partner with me? His son partnered with me? Well, there's another kind of a meaning. It is communion. We're close. You know, we talk about take communion. We communicate. Fellowship is when Joy and I have communion together. I'm not talking about juice and bread. <laughs> when we have communion, that's fellowship. When we partner on things, that's fellowship. And there is another meaning which I really love. It's, it's the word, this is koinonia, fellowship. A share. Did you know that I have a share with him? I have, a, I have an inheritance. The Bible is filled with that. I have an inheritance. I actually have an inheritance right here. The kingdom of God is within me. Inheritance. You have a share with God. I, I, I had some shares once in the stock market. I, I, somebody gave them to me. Relevant. Some shares. And I had a part of that company. But God gives you a share in the kingdom. And his share that he gives you, you read John 17, everything that's available to his son, he said, is available to you. You have given me everything and I am giving them everything. Everything of the kingdom of God is yours. Before you start thinking about kingdom of the benefits of, you know, assets like the world, you have a share in his suffering as well as his glory. You know what your share, you know what the kingdom of God is primarily? Joy, peace, love. Right? He gives you that share of the kingdom. He says, my peace I give unto you. I know, we're not getting to the lost son very far. It's important foundation because what happens is this legal son begins to walk away from fellowship. Oh, I'm still his, but I'm going to put some distance between. Because you know what? You don't want to sin in front of your father. You know. He's going out. And that's exactly what he's going to get into. The father's response. Why didn't the father? We get no lecture. The father doesn't say, you don't, I don't think it's time for you to do this, son. Or, you, or what's in your heart? Or no, I'm not going to divide my, my estate now. You have to wait for the proper time. The father just did it. And I, I, I wondered, boy, no argument, no discussion, no talk. It says the father did it. I will tell you this, because the father's response was free will. God does not drag you 
into fellowship, he draws you. He doesn't push you. His love calls you. And the, so the Father just divided it. it. It's this probably very reluctant wisdom. Did you know that God will allow you to make hurtful choices sometimes? It, it isn't that he planned them. It isn't that he wants them. But he also knows that if what, we come to a point where we have our kids, they have, they have a certain amount of freedom and we may give them a little more as they age and they've got to learn. But with God, it's, it's not that. It's like, you know what? Maybe if you go out there and you get some distance between you're out there losing fellowship, Maybe you'll see that there's nothing there like there is here. Oh, we're going to get into that in the narrative the big time. I think he allowed the sun to go so that the sun would see that there's nothing. There's nothing better. There's no share in the world that's as good as a share with the Father. Oops. So, the Father's response we're going to go right down to this. I'll keep going. <laughs> I, do remember, I do remember my leaving home. I was 17 and a half. You know, you stop saying half now. Usually. 17 and a half when I left home. I was not of legal age. Um, why was I leaving home? I had graduated. All of you know, I was, uh, I was a genius. And I graduated early. <laughs> um, I started school at five. <laughs> I started first grade at five. And when I graduated from high school, I still had six months before I turned 18. I didn't realize I couldn't even sign apartment leases, but I did. And when I told my folks, I'm leaving and going to the big city. <laughs> and I jumped the train because that's what I owned. Mm -hmm. And I know my mother was frantic. But my dad was pretty practical. Okay. Stay with the Lord. Um, I really had a wild time. I lived on five days a week macaroni and cheese. You could get five boxes for a dollar. And some of the time I didn't have milk with it. And that's what I ate. I didn't have cereal. I ate that for breakfast. I'd make a big pan and I'd eat that until it was gone. And once every two weeks I got paid I was making $2.05 an hour in the big city. And I got paid and I'd go out to dinner. And that was it. And I hitched rides and rode buses. But you know what? It isn't that I wanted to go back home. But it did make me realize how they had cared for me. And what the difference was. Now, now, um, I left. I'm just letting you know that in my leaving, there was, I'm getting out of this dump town, and I'm going to go have my own life with some fun. I wasn't leaving my parents' home. I was leaving my parents' heritage. They had given me Jesus. And I began to go my own way. And I won't go into that story. <laughs> but when I read his, The Lost Son, it reminds me of the pain of pleasure. The pleasures of this world result in pain. 
because it's an upside down world. But even the pain with God, the pain and suffering with Jesus, is pleasure in the kingdom. I count myself blessed to be called to suffer with Christ. How many here are willing to suffer for Him? Amen. 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 You know how you suffer for Him? Talk about Him around people that you don't know what they're going to say. You'll find out. Start talking about Jesus and you'll see. Let's, let's, let's go into at least two points. He began in verse 13 on his losing, I call it his losing flame. There are three parts to it. In verse 13. It's, it's one verse tells you so much. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all he had, traveled to a distant country because he wants to get away, and he squandered his estate in foolish living. And I said this. He packed up, he planned a new life, and it was party time. That's what happened. Gotta get away. Distant. Often pain in worldly pursuits. There's often pain in worldly pursuits. Financial, emotional, physical, and spiritual poverty. And I have felt them all when I got on a fellowship with the Father. Let me tell you a story. I'll, I'll read this. I don't want to get it wrong. Whitney Houston was raised in the Baptist faith by her parents. She joined the church choir at age five. How many know who Whitney Houston was? I loved her voice. She had gospel elms. You know what she said when she started her career? I will go and tell everybody I can about Jesus. And I'm not judging Whitney, but you listen to this. I'm not judging her at all. No way. I'm just telling you the sadness of the success and pleasure of this world. Whitney was amazing. She joined her church choir. She made her first solo performance debut at New Hope Baptist Church singing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. She was 12. She won six Grammy Awards and 22 American Music Awards. On February 11, 2012, Whitney Houston drowned in a bathtub at the Beverly Hills Hilton, at the Beverly Hills Hilton Hotel. With heart disease and cocaine use as the contributing factors. The last words recorded of Whitney Houston were these. This hit me so hard when I read it, because I have a sermon on this. I just want to love and be loved. That's her last words. Let me tell you. Listen, listen, listen. Going out there and finding pleasure is not the same as the love of the Father. Nobody loves you like He does. Amen. Nobody's going to love you like He has. He proved His love for you. There are people that say, oh, I would die for you, and you can't find them next week. <laughs> he did die for you, and you can find them any moment at any time. Amen. <laughs> don't lose your fellowship with the Father. I don't care how strong a Christian you think you are. Fellowship is an hourly, daily, monthly Yearly walk with him. I, 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 just, I actually put down some others. Marilyn Monroe. I know I'm bringing up old people. She was, 
supermodel star, the blonde bombshell, Marilyn Monroe. She died alone. Elvis Presley, by the way, I love Elvis Presley. I like his music. I have to try real hard not to sing like him when I sing. <laughs> I did because I was singing like Elvis Presley in our band. But Elvis Presley and his gospel hymns, he, was, he grew up with Christian atmosphere and he had Bibles around him all the time and he used to bring Stamps Quartet and all these gospel quartets and he would lease the whole upper floor of a hotel in Vegas after the show and he'd say, I just need to sing gospel. He had a heart. For God. I'm not judging his destination at all. That is not mine. That is God's. But lives can get so messed up when you get out of fellowship. A couple others, there are many that come to mind. I watched the story of Judy Garland. An amazing young girl. Where was she famous for? Do you remember? The Wizard of Oz. As a girl. Died of drug overdoses. Alcoholism. You want to know one of the saddest? Michael Jackson. I'm just naming. I could go, Michael Jackson. The Jackson Five. I remember when Michael Jackson was that high. That's because I was that high. Anyway, Michael Jackson, good, clean singing. I know, I know the family had trouble. What family here doesn't have trouble? Mm -hmm. None of us want to read about your family troubles. But Michael's is out there. Michael Jackson, all of these people I named this morning, all the money and all the friends, so-called, I just want to be loved. Michael Jackson kept trying to change his skin, whiten his skin. I got to tell you a truth. By the way, this is very, very, very true. I love the color of Asian people. Just you know, wonderful. That's fine. Filipina and you know all of that. I love the color. And. Um, When I've traveled there, like to Vietnam and to the Philippines, you know what they're all doing? Trying to be white. <laughs> they do. They have billboards. They have products. And, and they will wear umbrellas and make sure they stay out of the sun. And it's not about being white. It's just not, not being who, who, who I am. It's like always wanting something different. So here you go. And I'm going to the Philippines and it's like, yeah, I love this. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> you understand? Isn't that right? Am I right? Yeah. My, my son's stepdaughter, my Vietnamese son's stepdaughter, got ridiculed when we were in Saigon. Because to them, being dark Vietnamese, can you imagine? They said something right in front of her. Well, you're darker than your sister. That's not attractive. Do you know how the world will hurt people? Do you know how they will hurt people? And, and you know what we do? Oh, I'm going to go on the beach and lay out and get a tan. <laughs> I want to get dark. And the darker I got, that's great. Age, I just thought at least they won't notice my age as much or something like that. <laughs> but I want to tell you a really important theme here. It's not better out there. It's better there. We're going to get, oh, I can't wait to get to the rest of this story. But let's just do this really quick. The fall down, life's famines. The fall down, verse 14. After he had spent everything, 
A severe famine struck that country and he had nothing. Then he went to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his field to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. Do you get a picture of this? This kid had a robe, he had a ring, he had shoes. He was royalty in his home. And he gets out there, the food is gone. There's an unfulfilled hunger in the world. Sin leads to famine. You will never fill your hunger with the world's pleasures. Never. There will never be enough. Just like the stars I told you about. All of the accolades and all of the worship and all of the groupies could not meet the need that only God can meet. The food is gone. Verse 14, verse 15. His future is gone. You know what he's doing with his inheritance? He is now feeding pigs. Well, let me tell you, for a Jewish boy, that is not cool. <laughs> it's the worst job you could have because of their religion and everything. And he's feeding pigs. His future's gone. That's his job. I'm not making fun of little jobs. I am saying for him, feeding pigs was as low as it gets. And his friends were gone. Listen to, read those verses. It says, and no one would give him anything. Let me tell you something. When you, you can have a lot of friends when you have a fortune. But they won't stay. It'll be, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? But you know who never leaves? Though you make your bed in hell or the highest heavens, he will be there calling you and saying, I love you. He loves you. He's never going to quit. Don't back out of that. That's what this boy was doing. <clears throat> he left home full of hopes. Now he's full of hurts. His heaven is now hell. His extravagant party is just an unbelievable picture. It's a portrait of a pitiful life. Everything is opposite. Broken fellowship with the Father will always lead to failure. <clears throat> always. But I want to tell you the great news this morning. Failure is not final. Failure is never final. This boy is at the bottom. But the father is waiting. If you're here and there is failure in your life, and you know I've broken. I'm not talking to awful people. I'm not, ta I'm not, I'm not talking to prostitutes and... And, you know, IRS people, oh, I had to say that. I'm, not, I'm talking about people who sit in church, who have a legal relationship, and begin to get distracted with the cares of this world. And the more they go for fun, the more they're losing fellowship. And there are people here that in some area of your life you feel like a failure. Satan wants you to feel that failure is final. You blew it. It's done. It's over. And it's never final as long as the Father is waiting, as long as you have breath. You can call upon the Father. Don't feel it's over because you have failed. There is a Father who wants to end your famine and bring you into the family fellowship again. Amen. 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 
close your eyes for a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you that are going to watch this online. I don't know the predicament you're in, but the Father is welcoming you into the family. Come on home. Just arise and say, I'll go to my Father this morning. And I'll say, I've sinned. I'm not worthy. Please, just take me back. And you know what? Before you can finish the sentence, He'll throw His arms around you and take you back. Jesus, I pray for each one that so honestly and sincerely, and I know that, raise their hand. You know exactly what they need this morning, and they know what they need. And I pray that they will sense a fellowship. The fellowship with you, the partnership. That everything you have is shared with them. Whatever they need. Your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, your power, your authority, your joy, your peace. It's all available. It's part of the inheritance. And you want to share it. And would you do that and work miracles here this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.